I mean, how how would like human beings sort of experience such a, a super intelligent? I mean, like in practice, what's that like? Well, unless it's limited narrow super intelligence, I think you mostly don't get to observe it because you are dead, unfortunately. What? <laughs> We started OpenAI seven years ago because we felt like something really interesting was happening in AI. We wanted to help steer it in a positive direction. OpenAI unveiled the chat GP. He has been in circulation for just three months, and already an estimated 100 million people have used it. How many folks in the audience have used chat GPT? <laughs> yeah, I think it's the single largest opportunity and biggest tech paradigm shift we've seen since the internet originally came out. I'm going to show you how to use ChatGPT to make money online. Absolute best ChatGPT prompt. It will turn your drawing into a fully functional website. Chatbot GTP, thank you for talking to me today. You're welcome. I'm here to help answer any questions you may have. In six weeks, these guys have gone from... So appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Zero in valuation to now being a $29 billion auto company. Tonight, we take you inside the headquarters of a small company in San Francisco called OpenAI. Creators of ChatGPT, CEO Sam Altman is just 37. I think people should be happy that we're a little bit scared of this. I think people should be You're happy. a little bit scared. A little bit, yeah, You personally. Course. What is your like best case scenario for AI and worst case? The bad case, and I think this is like important to say, is like lights out for all of us. Listen up this morning, a massive development on the AI front. Elon Musk and other major tech leaders calling for a pause on giant artificial intelligence experiments. Writing bluntly in an open letter, AI systems with human competitive intelligence can pose profound risks to society and humanity. And nobody would suggest that we allow anyone to just build nuclear warheads if they want. That would be insane. And mark my words, AI is far more dangerous than nukes. The man widely seen as the godfather of artificial intelligence has quit his job at Google, warning of the dangers of AI. What I've been talking about mainly is what I call the existential threat, which is the chance that they get more intelligent than us and they'll take over. No, well, then I heard the old dude that created AI talking about, this is not safe because the AI's got their own minds. I'm like, is we in a f movie right now or what? <laughs> Can we have uh, the water, by the way, just brought here? I, th I think we're going to need it. It's a dry, <laughs> heavy dry, dry mouth topic. Um, so, so, you know, the original story that I heard on OpenAI when you were founded as a nonprofit, where you were there as the great sort of check on the big companies doing their unknown, possibly evil thing with AI, and you were going to build models that sort of somehow held them accountable and, and was capable of slowing the field down if need be. And yet what's happened, arguably, is the opposite, is that your release of ChatGPT put such shockwaves through the tech world that now Google and Meta and so forth are all scrambling to catch up. But this isn't an arms race, it's a suicide race where everybody loses if anybody's AI goes out of control. Do you share Jeffrey Hinton's worries? Absolutely. Do you believe, I'm quoting him, that it is not inconceivable that it could actually lead to the extinction of the human race? Not only is it not inconceivable, I think it is quite likely, unfortunately, and I'm not just the only one saying this. Overall, you know, maybe you're getting more up to like 50-50 chance of doom shortly after you have AI systems that are human level. This is a stat that took me by surprise. 50% of AI researchers believe there's a 10% or greater chance that humans go extinct from our inability to control AI. We have to realize what people are talking about. The destruction of the human race. The end of human civilization. I have a dream today. You see how it all evens out? Who would want to continue playing with that risk? But it is happening today and companies are continuing. But there's not enough divestment, there's not enough real meaningful action by the experts to say we are going to change our behavior in the interest of protecting humanity. It just sounds absurd that serious people like yourself, these tech people, can talk about the end of the human race. It, it really, it's really concentrates the mind. So every time you release a model, every time you build such a model, you're rolling it down. Maybe this time's fine. Maybe next time's fine. 
But at some point, it won't be fine. It's Russian roulette. So the risk is that ChatGPT 6 won't be written by humans. It'll be written by ChatGPT 5.5. I've been watching lots of these kind of long form podcasts with people like Sam Altman, who you mentioned, and then we'll continue to speak about the research they're doing after saying that it might bring about the end of humanity. Why do they carry on doing it? Yeah, I, um, I think that's a really important... <laughs> wow. And the investment in the creation of the foundation models is on the order of 50 million, 100 million. We don't share base much more than that billions of dollars and you know thousands tens of thousands of our brightest engineers and scientists are working day in day out to create ever more powerful systems well the number of people who work full time on like the alignment problem is probably less than 200 people if i had to guess the alignment means making it safe the moral alignment so at present so 99% of the money is going into developing them and 1% is going into sort of people saying oh these things might be dangerous it should be more like 50-50 i believe alignment is moving like this Capabilities are moving like this. For the we listener, can... capabilities are moving much faster than the alignment. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like we're, we're rushing towards this cliff, uh, but the closer the, the cliff we get, the more scenic the views are and the more money there is there. And the more, so, so we keep going, but we have to also stop at some point, right? Given how fast things are moving and how fast you're developing this technology, how much time do we actually have? CEOs involved in artificial intelligence development meeting with President Biden and Vice President Harris in Washington. The White House said that Biden told the CEOs they need to mitigate risks posed by AI to individual society and national security. I'm skeptical and I think many are skeptical. Maybe that's warranted because the technology just develops so, so quickly and public policy takes so much longer to develop. Just calling the private companies and say you are in charge and you have more obligation is nothing. Especially from Microsoft and Google, the two leaders here and OpenAI, I guess, you know, we hear the word responsible, responsible, responsible. We're going to do this responsibly. It seems like you're not buying that. What do you think? Well, those companies are responsible to their shareholders. They're not necessarily responsible to humanity as a whole. It's the systemic processes that are protecting business interests over human concerns that create this pervasive environment of irresponsible technology development. And raise your right hand. As these systems do become more capable, and I'm not sure how far away that is, but maybe not, not super far, I think it's important that we also spend time talking about how we're going to confront those challenges. So that's what a large language model is. It's this giant trillion parameter circuit that's been trained to predict the next word. What goes on inside, we haven't the faintest <laughs> idea. I expect there will be times when we find something that we don't understand and we really do need to take a pause, but we don't see that yet. We probably have more idea of what's happening inside the human brain than we do about what's happening inside the large language models. There is an aspect of this which all of us in the field call it as a black box. You know, you don't fully understand. You can't quite tell why it said this or why it got wrong. We have some ideas. You don't fully understand how it works, and yet you've turned it loose on society? Just shut down all the giant training wells. They don't know what they're doing. They're not taking it seriously. There's an enormous gap between where they are now and taking it seriously. And if they were taking it seriously, they, they'd be like, we don't know what we're doing, we have to stop. That is what it looks like to take this seriously. A traditional software system, programmer writes code, which solves a problem. AI is very different. AIs are not really written. They're more like grown. You have a sample of data of what you wanted to accomplish. And then you use huge supercomputers to crunch these numbers to kind of like organically almost grow a program that solves these problems. And importantly, we have no idea how these programs work internally. They are complete black boxes. We don't understand at all how their internals work. This is an unsolved scientific problem. And we do not know how to control these things. What a lot of safety researchers have been saying for many years is that the most dangerous things you can do with an AI is, first of all, teach it to write code, because that's the first step towards recursive self-improvement, which can take it from AGI to 
much higher levels. Bard has already learned more than 20 programming languages. Let's get ChatGPT to write some code for us. Oops, we've done that. Another thing, high risk, is connected to the internet. Let it go to websites, download stuff on its own, uh, talk to people. A big part of our strategy is, while these systems are still relatively weak and deeply imperfect, to find ways to get people to have experience with them, to have contact with reality, and to figure out what we need to do to make it safer and better. Oops, we've done that already. That's like saying, well, the only way we can test our new medicine, the only way we can know whether it's safe or not, is to actually put it right into the water supply, keep it to literally everybody as fast as possible. And then before we get the results for the last one, make an even more potent drug and put that into the water supply as well and do this as fast as possible. Have you seen uh, Don't Look Up, the film? This feels like a gigantic uh, don't look up scenario. It's a movie about like this asteroid hurtling to Earth. Good afternoon, everybody. There's an expert from the Machine Intelligence Research Institute who says that if there is not an indefinite pause on AI development, this is a quote, literally everyone on Earth will die. <laughs> Would you agree that does not sound good? <laughs> Your delivery, Peter, is quite, it's quite something. We are taking this very seriously. We put our blueprint out. It is a cohesive federal government approach to AI-related risks, as you just laid out in a very dramatic way. Uh, but clearly... Is there anything more dramatic I mean, you just read it. Literally that... everyone on Earth will die. Pretty, pretty dramatic. Pretty dramatic. Isn't that an extinction-level event? Wow, that's not be dramatic here. At this very moment, I say we sit tight and assess. We are actually acting out. It's life imitating art. Humanity is doing exactly that right now, except it's an asteroid that we are building ourselves. I feel like we're at the beginning of a uh, disaster film where they show the news clips and about the, like the when everything went The newscasters laughing yeah, it off. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, well, as it's damaging, will it hit this one house in particular that's right on the coast of New Jersey? It's my ex wife's house. I need it to be hit. Can Come we on, make that happen? Would, what is your like best case scenario for AI and worst case? I mean, I, I think the best case is like so unbelievably good that it's like hard to, it, I, I think it's like hard for me to even imagine. Like, and when these uh, treasures from heaven are claimed poverty as we know it, social injustice, loss of biodiversity, all these multitudes of problems are just gonna become relics of the past. We are working to build tools that one day can help us make new discoveries and address some of humanity's biggest challenges like climate change and curing cancer. They found a bunch of gold and diamonds and rare shit on the comet. So they're gonna let it hit the planet to make a bunch of rich people even more disgustingly rich. Almost nobody is talking about it. And then you have Harry. People are squabbling and across the planet about all sorts of things which seem very minor compared to the asteroid that's about to hit us. And one of the things that worries me most about the development of AI at this point. So do I need to invest in the AI so I can have one with me? We seem unable to marshal an appropriate emotional response to the dangers that lie ahead. Right now, we're at a fork in the road. This is the most important fork the humanity has reached in its over 100,000 years on this planet. We're building, effectively, a, a new species that's smarter than us. It's as if aliens had landed, but we didn't really take it in because they speak good English. We think that regulatory intervention by governments will be critical to mitigate the risks of increasingly powerful models. For example, the U.S. government might consider a combination of licensing and testing requirements for development and release of AI models above a threshold of capabilities. Humans have kind of changed the environment on Earth very significantly as a result of our intelligence relative to other species, and that's had you know, significant consequences for some species and for the biosphere in general. Common sense tells you that something similar might happen if we invent something more intelligent than us. Arguably, we are on the event horizon of the black hole that is artificial superintelligence. If we were to write a book about the folly of the history of human hubris dealing with nukes and AI and things like that, we could easily have the last chapter in that book if we are not more careful about confident wrong ideas. 
It's possible that there's no way we will control these superintelligences and that humanity is just a passing phase in the evolution of intelligence. Most observers and experts would say we're on this path towards superhuman intelligence and we're not prepared for success. We're investing hundreds of billions of dollars into a technology that, if eventually it succeeds, could be civilization ending, could be a huge catastrophe. I have not met anyone right now in this lab who says that, sure, the risk is less than 1% of blowing up the planet. It's important that people know that their lives are being risked by these very particular experiments. Let's be clear, they are racing for their own personal gain, for their own glory, towards an existential catastrophe that no one is consented to. We just had a little baby and I keep asking myself, you know, <laughs> how old is he even going to get, you know, and, and um, I said to my wife recently, it feels a little bit like I was just diagnosed with some sort of uh, cancer, which has some you know, risk of, of dying from and some risk of surviving, you know, except this is the kind of cancer which will kill all of humanity. If somebody's listening to this and they're young and trying to figure out what to do with their life, what advice would you give them? Don't expect it to be a long life. Don't, don't put your happiness into the future. The future is probably not that long at this point, but none know the hour nor the day. 